Republicans are being mocked for turning Congress into a three ring circus. The clown show began on Tuesday uh, in a series of separate incidents that happened. One of them being former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who represents California's 20th district, getting into a physical altercation with one of the members who ousted him last month. You also had Representative James Comer of Kentucky calling Representative Jared Moskowitz of Florida a smurf for uh, challenging him on, you know, his uh, shady land swaps. Not only that, but you also had Senator Mark Wayne Mullen of Oklahoma trying to get the leader of the Teamsters, Sean O'Brien, to engage him in fisticuffs on the Senate floor. Yes, after he read out mean tweets that O'Brien made about former President Donald Trump. Then, of course, you had Marjorie Greene going after Representative Daryl Issa, another Republican, uh, even calling him the P-word. Wet-ass P-word. <laughs> now, the dispute between Comer and Moskowitz started during an oversight committee hearing when the two sparred for reports that Comer had loaned his brother, $200,000, despite criticizing President Biden for doing essentially the same thing, okay? In another incident reported by NPR, McCarthy had wasped past uh, Representative Tim Burchett, or Burchett, whatever, of Tennessee, and elbowed him, shoved him. Even some reports were, uh, were Kevin's like, uh, oh, they, they say that, he said that I kidney punched, I didn't kidney punch anybody. Uh, okay. Uh, now, that led to Burchett chasing the former House Speaker, and lunging at him. So again, them getting into a, a literal physical altercation here. Uh, then, of course, in the Senate, Mark Wayne Mullen had to be stopped by Senator Bernie Sanders from starting the brawl with O'Brien. In fact, here's uh, some video of that, and then Sanders going on CNN and speaking about what happened. Take a look. Sure, this is a time, this is a place. If you want to run your mouth, we can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Big oh, hold, stop it. Is that your solution every poll? No, no, sit down. Sit down. Okay. You know, you're a United States senator. Sit down. Active. Oh, okay. okay. Sit down, please. Well, it's pretty pathetic. I mean, we have a United States senator challenging a, you know, a um, member of the panel who is the head of one of the larger unions in America, which has just negotiated a very good contract for their workers, Teamsters. You know, I, I think and I, the point that I try to make there is, you know, this country, Anderson, faces so many crises. We have massive income and wealth inequality. We have a housing crisis. Our health care system is, you know, almost collapsing. It's broken. It's dysfunctional. We pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Climate change is threatening the entire existence of the planet. And this is what goes on in a Senate hearing. And that's why you know, the American people are getting sick and tired of what goes on here in Congress. So, look, uh, for a second there, at the beginning of the, the first video, it's almost like Bernie Sanders is ready to jump in and be like, hey, are you, okay, boys, are you, you, you stay over there, all right? Uh, but, look, at least you can always count on him, and, and he didn't have to do that, obviously, but uh, you can always count on Bernie Sanders to stay on message. So, immediately being asked about this, he goes into... Talking about uh, you know the issues of unions and healthcare and 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 all that and and of course uh, later on in that interview he also said media loves this the media ra would rather talk about you know, you know these two senators uh, or I'm sorry the senator and the guest here um, in this hearing you know almost getting into a fist fight instead of talking about like workers and stuff and uh, okay that's a good point that's a good point um, <laughs> that said uh, as much as I like Bernie Sanders. I just wish he supported a ceasefire in Gaza. Uh, come on, Bernie. Come on, do the right thing. Uh, that said, breaking up that fight did get Sanders uh, an unlikely uh, praise from an unlikely source who also, at the same time, criticized Republicans. I never thought I'd say this, but Bernie Sanders seems to be the voice of reason here. Yeah. Everything you just saw was a complete and utter embarrassment. It shouldn't be what is projected to our kids from our nation's capital. Reminder to all of you, yeah, the children are watching. You're supposed to be the adults in the room, so act like it.
Uh, you know, it really, it really feels like we're in one of these uh, broken clocks situations <laughs> where, oh, wait a minute. You've got to, wait, Laura, Laura Ingram calling out the clowns and, and her own part. What is, what is happening? What is happening? But I do have to ask, though, if uh, Laura Ingram had been paying attention, because obviously not, because this is what it's been like for years, years. But look, that said, the difference here is it's mainly been Republican on Republican crime as of late. Um, now, that said, the chaos was also called out on Twitter. Uh, this is journalist Nick Knudsen writing on X, uh, formerly Twitter, uh, said, while Democrats fight metaphorically for our right to unionize, Republicans literally try to fight our organizers. Senator Mullen is a multimillionaire. <laughs> Tell me your party hates working people without telling me. Uh, now, here you have a former Republican presidential candidate, Joe Walsh, weighing in, saying, yeah, Republicans had a bad day today. Spewing dysfunction, getting in fights with each other, and even threatening to beat up a witness. But the media is acting like the GOP's behavior today is the end of the Republic or something. You know, it's the end of the, you know what the end of the Republic is? The end of the Republic is when a sitting president refuses to accept an election loss, tries to overthrow uh, the election and leads a violent insurrection. His party still worships him to the point where they make him the nominee for president in the next election. An election in which he says if he wins, he'll become dictator, throws political opponents in jail, and his party hears him say all that and still bows to him. That right there, that's the end of the Republic. Uh, look, um, Joe Walsh, Okay, I, I agree with this point about Trump. Uh, that's a fair point. Okay, um, actually, he's correct about that literally being the end of the Republic, sure. Um, that said, I do have to slightly disagree with the fact that the media was acting like this, you know, Republican infighting being the end of the Republic. No, I, I look, I haven't seen that. Maybe I'm not watching the same media that uh, Joe Walsh is, which is probably, you know, watching a lot of, establishment media uh but look I, i'm gonna treat it the way that it is and it's a it's another clown show because <laughs> that's that's what's happening okay all they're missing is is the makeup and the horns you know um look it's what i've been saying for a long time now long time viewers of the show you've heard me say this more than once you will let clowns expect the circus and well we have the circus are we entertained yet